Hello, everyone, and happy Friday to you. Welcome to Business Basics Friday. Uh, my name is Safi Russell, and I will be hosting our guest speaker today. Just to give a little background about myself, um, I'm a CEO and founder of SDR Consulting, Inc., and I've been in the industry about 19 years. I'm a CPA and enrolled agent, and we are um, based in New York, but we have a virtual practice, so we have clients all over, and we mostly work with small business owners, helping them from business formation all the way through to tax preparation and all that fun stuff in between. And the purpose of today, Business Basics Friday, is just to provide value to small business owners out there and go over, you know, some open Q&A at the end for some things that you may come across that you're not sure of. Of course, today is really just educational, no guarantees, um, definitely set up an official consult for your specific situation. So I'm going to introduce our guest speaker now, um, this is Delchise Hart Anderson, an enrolled agent with the IRS, through the IRS, I should say, and she's going to cover three secrets you should know to stay out of tax trouble as a business owner. So Delchise, feel free to take it away. Good morning. Thank you so much, Safi. Um, and I'm going to share my screen for all of you out there. And so um, Safi, I'm going to rely on you to let me know. Can you see the screen? Perfect, yep. Okay, awesome. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about me. Oops, I'm trying to get, there we go. Who am I? I am an IRS enrolled agent. I have my bachelor's and master's in accounting. And I do tax representation all year long. I help get businesses and individuals out of tax problems. I've been in corporate America. That was before I started with uh, tax resolution. I was in corporate America in accounting and finance departments um, of Fortune 500 companies. I am a real estate investor. I love, love, love real estate. And I also speak on topics uh, um, for the SBA and the IRS on tax topics as well as consulting with other tax professionals and attorneys on tax resolution issues, right? So none of that really matters because the truth of the matter is I'm just an entrepreneur, just like everyone that's listening or looking at this presentation today. So all of that aside, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a small business owner with the same issues, um, highs and lows like everyone else if that makes any sense, okay? Um, so I would like to talk to you today about, um, we are gonna talk about three secrets every business owner should know when it comes to staying out of tax trouble. So um, people tend to, um, it's kind of hard when you talk about um, staying out of tax trouble, people are probably in tax trouble already. So my three secrets will really, center around un that understanding. So the one secret is obviously knowing that a problem exists. And then the next secret is what are the consequences? So you're here, you, you're in a bad tax situation. What are you going to do now? And then the third secret is the solution, getting your tax problem solved. Okay, so let's talk about how did you get here? So for people or businesses, and, and I say people because individuals or people are made up of, um, businesses are made up of individuals or people. So I'll kind of use that interchangeably. I probably should just say taxpayers. But there are a lot of different ways that you could get into tax trouble. You could have unfound returns, you could have unpaid returns, and whether that's income tax or whether it's payroll taxes, um, sometimes it's not even something that you've done. It could be a partner if you have a partnership or it could be um, a family member. Sometimes it's your bookkeeper, right? So I've seen a lot of situations. Um, I think I was reading something yesterday where a bookkeeper stole some money um, and they were not paying the payroll taxes for the business they were supposed to. They were charged with doing so, but they were not paying the payroll taxes. As a result, that made the business, the business owner get in trouble, put them in a bad situation. And the bookkeeper, by the way, just went off into la-la land. So now we know like 
those are the ways you could get in tax trouble. Now that you're in tax trouble, now what? Okay. So these are non-tax related things that can happen to you when you are in tax trouble. And if anybody just think about what we've gone through from the pandemic, the first, especially the first part of the pandemic, you wouldn't be able to apply for a government loan. You don't qualify for any governmental grants. You can't become a government contractor, okay? And for those of you that may have government clearances, whether it's through your business or personally, you're not going to be able to obtain government clearance or you could lose your government clearance if you are in tax trouble. And I am so sorry, I'm not sure why um, my um, slides are going so slow. Let me see if I can put everything out there. Okay, um, so from a tax perspective, so those were non-tax related issues, things that could happen. But from a tax related perspective, if you are in tax trouble and your business is in tax trouble, guess what? You are subject to staff inquiries. The IRS can certainly contact any of your staff. They can contact neighbors, anyone that they feel that can give you give them information on why you aren't paying your tax bill, they can reach out to those people. They also can knock on your door. And by the way, it still is COVID, so it is not the IRS's desire to knock on anyone's door, but they definitely will do so when necessary. You could have lien filings, and we all know lien filings are public record. And I shouldn't say we all know, but if you didn't know, lien filings are public records, so you don't necessarily want everyone to know that you have a tax issue. And if you are due a refund, Sometimes that refund can be taken. Yes, we're talking about a business, but if your business profits flow through to your personal tax return, and if you are due a refund, the refunds could be taken. And then, of course, there's just those penalties and interest that anytime you owe any money to the IRS or state age tax and agencies, there will be additional penalties and interest assessed. Sometimes the IRS will force you to shut down your business. They can freeze your bank accounts. They can garnish your wages, okay? Because every, some people have side hustles. So you may have a full-time job and then you have a side hustle. So now your business and your personal are kind of intertwined. If that happens, they can garnish your wages for any business taxes that you owe, depending on how your business structure is set up. Also, if you have contractors, they can levy your contract payments that are supposed to go to you. They can levy those payments and tell the contractor, hey, business A owes us money. Don't send that money. Don't send any payments that are due to business A to business A send those payments directly to us, big bad IRS, okay? And a lot of people may ask, how do they even know who my contractors are? Think about all of those 1099, MISC and 1099 NEC forms, more so the NEC forms now. The IRS, when you get a copy from your contractors, then the IRS is gonna get a copy as well. Your passport can be taken. And then just the quality of life that you have when you owe the IRS, right? It is that quality of life of looking over your shoulder, wondering, is my bank account going to be levied? Are my wages gonna be garnished? What is that next letter gonna say? Is that letter certified? Do I have to go to the post office to sign off? It's just a lot of stress when you owe the IRS and you don't address the situation, okay? So just know that you do have options, okay? The three most important rules when you have those tax issues is to make sure that you file 
all overdue tax returns, you stop accumulating more debt and you want to resolve the tax debt with a tax strategy. Don't just go into it saying, oh, I'll pay it, okay? Have a strategy, have a plan. Make sure you owe the amount that the IRS is saying that you owe, okay? Make sure the debt is yours. See, make sure that you can't, um, or not make sure that you can't, but check to see if you can receive any type of um, payment reliefs, okay? Now, I'm talking about penalty abatements, um, any offers and compromises. So when you're getting out of tax debt, there are three main pathways to get you out of tax debt, but these are not the only ways, okay? So currently non-collectible. That's, hey, IRS, I know I owe you some money, but I can't afford to pay you right now. Stop trying to stop harassing me. Stop trying to collect. Then there are installment agreements. So here's the thing. There are several different types of installment agreements. Just make sure you're in the correct one for your financial situation. And then the third is the offer in compromise. Hey, IRS, I know I owe you this money, but let me pay you less than what I owe you, okay? And then sometimes with all of these three strategies, you still may end up paying the IRS less than you owe them. That's why it's important. Oh, let me go back. When I say in number three, resolve the tax debt with tax debt strategies, come up with a strategy versus going off of the first thing the IRS says. And that is it for me. Um, I don't, Safi, do you want me to do this now or just wait until there's, um, if any questions? Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll wrap that up at the end. Um, I'll just see if there's any questions. I'm not seeing any right now, but I want to thank you for sharing that. That was really helpful. And, you know, the main thing with um, businesses is really knowing the trouble you can get into and stopping it before it starts when possible, you know, but if not, working with a professional to get out of those situations is your best bet because dealing with the IRS on your own is like going to court without a lawyer. You know, yes, you can do it, but does it make sense, you know? Um, and, for, you know, the takeaways from what you talked about, you know, is compliance. It really starts there. You know, a lot of people who are in business, they're so busy running the business, they're not catching up with the bookkeeping and the taxes. And then year after year, that's how you can fall behind. So at some, at some point, you may need to outsource to a professional your bookkeeping, your tax prep, but definitely be aware of what's going on because you can run into the situation like Deltrice mentioned with a bookkeeper not paying the taxes. So although you may have someone handling things, you're ultimately still responsible for your business. So it's important that you understand what needs to be done and then have someone else do it if you can't handle it. However, stay on top of it. You agree with that, Deltrice? I agree 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then paying your taxes. You know, a lot of businesses want, business owners want to, save on taxes, which is understandable. But at the end of the day, if you're profitable, you're going to pay taxes, you know? Um, of course, there's strategies out there with multi-billion and millionaires who have very low tax rates. However, um, at the point where you are at a small business owner, middle class, you know, there's only but so much, you know, that can be done within the law. And so you just want to be prepared, put aside 30%, maybe even 40% of your money for taxes. That's just the way it is between federal and state and local, et cetera. And make sure you're separating money that is not yours. For example, employee payroll, sales tax. These are things that have to be turned over to the government, although they may be sitting in your account, it's not yours to spend. So the, the secrets is really just being prepared, being compliant and paying your taxes. You know? And then if you didn't do all that and you get into trouble, Del Chies could definitely help you <laughs> out of that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I would like to add, sometimes there are situations where the taxes just can't be paid for whatever reason. You know, people come into bad situations. It's OK. But if at least you file your taxes, very similar to individuals, at least file the taxes. Um, and then if you can't pay, it's, a, it's OK. 
then you'll have these, these three options available or one of these three options will be available for you. But you have to make sure that you absolutely positively cannot pay. You cannot tell the IRS, oh, um, I need to um, do Christmas this year because they IRS doesn't care about Christmas, Thanksgiving, any of those things. They want the money that is rightfully due to them. But you got to make sure that you owe the amount that they're saying to because that has um, I've seen those issues a good bit. Yeah, they make, you know, everyone makes mistakes, you know, it's very possible. And the IRS is the, is the world's biggest um, uh, collection agency, you know, that may be the phrase, right? <laughs> yes. Collecting on behalf of the government. So um, that's their job, you know, and and it all starts with, you know, um, letters, and then it can get more aggressive and definitely with a knock on the door, but just don't ignore the letters, you know, definitely, you know, speak with a professional so they can understand what notices you're receiving, what stage of collection you're at, and what your options are. And, you know, some of the penalties that you can end up get, getting assessed, you know, sometimes are half the amount of taxes that you owe if you just let it carry on and carry on. Just filing versus not filing cuts down significantly one of the penalties that you could be assessed. So definitely um, if you can't pay and you're nervous, at least file and then you know work towards the payment after. But to not do both, it just adds on more penalties and interest down the road. Absolutely. And um, so Dolce, what do you think about you know business owners who are just getting started out um, in terms of preparing their business properly, you know, um, as far as getting you know bookkeeping in place, structure, having a professional do their taxes. What are your thoughts on that? All of the above. So make sure and get with a professional early on. Start early, even if it's just a consultation to say, hey, what do I need to do? Have that conversation. So you may not think that you can afford um, a bookkeeper, but sometimes you can not afford to have a bookkeeper. But have those conversations early. Just lay it out for your professional this is what I'm dealing with now. Uh, tell, and sometimes um, there will be uh, professionals that will just help you to set up your books and train you how to do your books. Now, as a business owner, I would never suggest that you prepare your own tax return. I, I just think that is business suicide. Um, unless you are an accountant, <laughs> then you could do it. But if you are not in the business of tax preparation, do not prepare your own tax return. So get your book set up. Make sure that you have separate bank accounts for your business versus individual. Don't mix and mingle because that's another thing when it comes to if you're ever in tax trouble, if you have mixed and mingled your business and your personal expenses, guess what? The IRS wants to see not only your business bank accounts, they want to see your personal bank accounts. And sometimes I've seen where people have a parent or a spouse or someone else on, on that bank account, now they want to look into the other bank accounts of the other person or persons that are listed on their account. So now you've opened up a can of worms for too many people. You don't want to let the IRS in like that. So yeah, those things uh, don't mix and mingle those bank accounts. Definitely get with a professional, an accountant early on, and not just someone that says, oh, I do bookkeeping. It's okay to ask for credentials. It's okay to say, are you a CPA? Are you an enrolled agent? Yeah. And even if it's bookkeeping, are you certified? I, and I don't like to, because I, I, I try to stay away from um, different names of uh, bookkeeping softwares, but there are certifications that people take to be able to prepare your books accurately. Don't be afraid to ask for those certifications, ask for the licenses. Um, yeah, th those are kind of like my tips there, but seeking help early, I think is going to be the key. And then ask for follow-ups, ask for, you know, can we meet monthly if you need? Can we meet quarterly? Get with your tax professionals on a regular basis. And that's going to help you at the end of the year where you don't have the big tax surprise. So you may end up never being in a bad situation because you've already set yourself up for success. Absolutely. Great information. And it's all about the setup. You know, that's something that we specialize in is working with, you know, business owners from 
setting up their business all the way through to tax prep. And it is a process. It is uh, an ongoing process. And so when people come just in April or February or March to file their taxes for the, you know, everything's already happened last year. It's after the fact, not much that can be done at that point. And that's how you get into the cycle of owing and not being able to catch up. One of the points you mentioned was um, not accumulating more debt. The only way to do that is to pay your estimated taxes for the year you're in. But then if you're always trying to pay for the prior years, then sometimes people get stuck not being able to do both. And it just becomes this vicious cycle. So you know, when you start from the beginning, putting that money aside, paying your taxes in quarterly, um, then you won't end up owing as much when you file and then getting into that cycle of owing and trying to prepay for the upcoming year. So, um, so definitely it's, it's understanding that, you know, um, if I was to go into um, a hospital and try to do a nurse's role, I would have no idea where to start. So it's understandable as business owners that you may not know all this, but if you work with someone who can help get you, you know, started on the right foot or backtrack and fix what's happened so that you can move forward, that's, that's all we can recommend. And like Deltree said, it costs you more in the end to not do it up front. You know, so uh, we will take any questions if there's any on Clubhouse. Thank you for joining here on Clubhouse and anyone's on Facebook Live. Feel free to post a question in the comment. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up in a minute and this will be available um, saved um, in Facebook. It will also be available on our YouTube page and in also in our podcast. So you'll have plenty of times to hear it again and share uh, with others. All right. And so the only other thing I want to mention is um, you had mentioned, Deltrice, that some businesses, uh, depending on how they pass through to the individual, you know, even though your business is separate, the liability can still attach to you personally. So um, depending on your entity structure, I know that can vary on how, um, how much access the IRS can get to you personally for your business. But in most cases, unless you're like a C-Corp, and even then, if you're a responsible party, you know, there's always a way for an IRS to match up a business to a person. That's why when you register your business, when you register your EIN, your tax ID, there's a responsible party that has to be put in. That responsible party is subject to the liability of the businesses. Have you had any um, experiences with that? Deltrice, I'm sure you have. Yes, absolutely. And then another thing, even with, like you said, the C corporation. So definitely the IRS that flow through with an S corporation or a partnership, they know those K-1s already. So they can identify easily any partners or, um, or members of an LLC um, or shareholders of an S corporation. And then of course, if it's a Schedule C, they can recognize who those are as well. Now with the C Corp, it might take them a little while longer, but believe you me, they will find out who it is because once the IRS comes knocking on your door, one of the forms that they, if especially with payroll taxes, one of the forms they get you to fill out, they interview you and say, okay, who's responsible? Who was paying these payroll taxes? Who's responsible for getting this, this payroll money to the IRS? So they'll find out one way or the other. Absolutely. Yeah. So you just don't want to do it. And if you end up buying a business or something down the road or as a change in ownership, make sure to update that responsible party because whoever they have on files, who they're going to go after. So um, a lot of, you know, ends to tie up, you know, to make sure all your T's are crossed and I's are dotted. All right. So I am not seeing any questions. That means you, you did great explaining everything. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and wrap up. I'll go ahead and... Um, have you, Del Street, share your information, contact information, and how people connect with you, and then I'll close out. Okay. Um, am I still screen sharing? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is how you can get in touch with me, Facebook, um, dheart.accounting, subscribe to YouTube at dheart accounting, email tax help at dheart accounting. Um, if you have an immediate problem, tax problem, and you want to just get an appointment to chat about it, you go to www.callthetaxpro.com. Perfect. All right, great. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. A little screen share. Okay, great. All right. So um, thanks everyone who joined us here for this Business Basics Friday session. And again, I'm Safi Russell, CEO and founder of SDR Consulting, Inc., 
And we mostly work with uh, small business owners, helping them from business formation all the way through tax preparation and all that fun stuff in between. We also do do a little in the tax resolution field as well, but Deltrice is definitely the pro in that area. And um, if you do want to reach us by phone, it's 516-255-6603. You can find us online at sdrconsultinginc.com. That's S as in Sam, D as in David, R as in Robert, and on social media at SDR Consulting. So everyone have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. And Dolce, thanks again for joining us. Have a great day. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.